Welcome back to Celebrating Act Two, where John Combe and I sit down with Dr. Liz Lister and uh, learn stuff. <laughs> Dr. Liz, I feel that you're our best source for medical information and life information, because after all, medicine is all about us as we get older. We uh, we notice everything changes and we're on more meds than ever. But what I've noticed mm -hmm. recently, and I don't know why it's only recently, after all, I've been an old guy for a long time. I've noticed that we all are growing hair. We're losing hair where we don't want to lose hair. We're growing hair where we don't want to grow hair. Mm -hmm. In men, of course, it's uh, I'm trimming my ears like I never, why I'm growing hair in my ears, I have no idea. My air, uh, nose and my ears, but I noticed in women, it, facial hair. Now, what's that about? Right. Exactly. Those are the kinds of changes that happen to us all if we are lucky enough to get older, right? Uh, that is definitely true. So lots of changes happen. Uh, as you said, women talk about uh, la loss of eyebrows, sometimes loss of eyelashes, yes. and uh, kind of moving down the face onto the chin. That's yes. what women, that's what we experience, and that's what I hear from women. So there you go. Uh, a little bit with the nose, too. Not so much with the ears. That is interesting how that affects women and men differently. Uh, but here's a gist that affects uh, women at a lot of different ages, actually. Uh, oftentimes when there are hormonal changes. So we've talked a lot about the decline in hormone levels as we get older. Also, women and of course men go through body hair and facial hair changes in puberty as well. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's when young men go from having this fine hair to more of a, a beard growth. Okay. Yeah. Right. And and in that case, it's usually a desired change. OK, so what's happening? What's ha what, what appears to be happening is a change in the sensitivity. Of course, we have hair all over our bodies, but usually it's fine hair that's not visible to others. It's not thick. It's soft. It's light color usually. And it's what we call vellus hair. And it changes to what is referred to as terminal hair, which is the thick color that you can see. All right. And so in puberty, in boys becoming men, that's a desired change. In women, in menopause, they're getting the hair. It's becoming darker and more coarse, more like whiskers, those menopause whiskers. Uh, not not usually a desired change. The most common cause is the response to androgens, usually testosterone. That's the main androgen. It's not necessarily from the levels. However, it can be. For example, boys going through puberty have increases in testosterone. However, women in menopause don't necessarily have increased testosterone, but they have an increased sensitivity to it in the receptors in those facial hair follicles. Mm. So what, what can, what can uh, or are women doing, since this is something that John and I have really very little information about, uh, what can the women in our audience, uh, what can they do, what kind of questions can they ask uh, their physician? Uh, is there treatment for right. it other than plucking and shaving? Yes, absolutely. So first of all, to your point of plucking or shaving, it really is a matter of the degree to which it's happening and the degree to which it bothers her. That's That's number one. Number two, is making sure that there isn't an underlying cause that needs to be addressed. So we talked about the natural, normal changes that happen. However, sometimes there can also be other conditions. Younger women can have something called polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS. And that 
should have the testosterone levels measured because there's a treatment for it. And, and I'll say more about treatments in just a second, but also uh, it's important to rule out other adrenal problems. There can be adrenal conditions that cause there to be too much androgen production. So especially before menopause, very important to rule out these causes and to treat them. As far as treatment, there are a number of things that can be done. Uh, you mentioned waxing, shaving, uh, topical hair removal. That's fine. However, it is very important to make sure you're also addressing the underlying cause. There also can be some conditions. I mean, I had a patient who was literally having to wax her face every single day. So that was not, that's not normal. Not in menopause, so she was pre-menopause. So there are all those topical types of, there's a cream, it's called eflornithine cream. It used to go under the trade name of Vanica. However, it's not available at the moment because of a lack of supply of the active ingredient. So, and it didn't work that well anyway. It was never a, a very big, big seller. Uh, it would slow down the rate of growth of the facial hair. However, hmm, not that helpful. And also in women, usually before menopause, we're talking about hirsutism as facial hair growth or the chest or the neck or the belly. So I wanna also put that out there. More permanent removal methods, electrolysis, laser hair removal, uh, those can be helpful. Also, there can be androgen blocking medications. A very common one is called spironolactone. Spironolactone, blocks that effect in the skin. So it actually can help prevent hair loss on the head and it can prevent hair growth in the other areas uh, where we do not want uh, that excess hair growth. So an androgen blocking medication uh, can also be very useful. We use it a lot in transgender medicine so that uh, transgender women who are, they've been male before and becoming their own true gender of female, uh, we use spironolactone a lot because it will prevent further hair loss on the head as many men experience. So we want to prevent hair loss on the head and we want to prevent hair growth uh, in those other kind of male areas like the face, the chest, uh, and so on. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. So and it's not just, so so it's not just cosmetic, although for a lot That's of people right. it is. Um, I think it was popularized in uh, the greatest show on earth. We had this wonderful voice of a, a woman who had a full beard, and uh, so That's uh, right. most women would not want that. I'm making an assumption, although to have that right. voice, it, it might be worth it to have that voice, uh, but. Um, uh, <laughs> I guess the important thing is that if it bothers somebody enough uh, that it's probably probably it's worth taking a look at the underlying cause so that That's in right. case you have something that's more dangerous than cosmetic, uh, that you might be able to look into it and have a pretty good chance of controlling it. That's right. That's exactly right. And, you know, we here always talk about don't let your doctor just give you the Band-Aid medication. We want your doctor to look at the underlying cause. Younger women, I mentioned PCOS, very common for those young women to be treated with birth control pills, which does work as a Band-Aid. However, it's not fixing uh, the underlying issue. So it's very important when you talk to your doctor, ask for the testing, be the tail that wags the dog, get your doctor to uh, do that looking under the hood so that you can actually have the underlying cause addressed and, and not only the Band-Aid. Good advice. Good advice. Well, thanks for tackling uh, a subject that's very difficult to, for a lot of women and uh, certainly fascinating. Thank you.
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.